Hi guys, it's Lara. Thank you all for watching. Today I'm going to be talking about how I healed my chronic gastritis while still on vegan diet. I always like to say that it was a 3D principle. Diagnose, diet and discipline. There was no magic wand. It was a process. I had my ups and downs, but it all had a happy end. And if you want to learn more about that, then please keep watching. Last year I got diagnosed with chronic gastritis, even though it's been a journey till I got my diagnose. Last year has been a bitch for me. So at the beginning of the summer I had strong abdominal pain and some other symptoms I'm gonna go into in a bit. And that was the reason why I ended up in a hospital. And after they ran a few checks, they found out that there was a change in my liver tissue. So later we found out that I have a benign liver tumor. I call my liver tumor Marla. And if you want to meet Marla and learn more about her, I'll link a video down below. So anyway, since anybody was from that time on focusing on my liver, no one even thought about the idea of doing a gastroscopy. And I had a gastroscopy done two months later. And that's when I got my chronic gastritis diagnosed. And it looked as though I had acute gastritis at first, but because it hasn't been treated, it developed into chronic gastritis. My symptoms were following loss of appetite, nausea, burning pain in my stomach, sometimes also pinching pain. And I was always feeling super full even after eating the smallest amount of food. And I also felt pressure in my upper belly. Now let's compare my symptoms with the general gastritis symptoms. Gnawing or burning ache or pain in digestion in your upper abdomen. That can get better or worse after eating. Nausea, vomiting, a feeling of fullness in your upper abdomen after eating. So it's pretty much what I described. I'm not sure what exactly caused my gastritis. There are several things that may cause gastritis, but there is one thing that is very common and that could be a bacterial infection with a bacteria named Helicobacter pylori or pylori, not sure how to pronounce it in English. The symptoms are very similar, but there are a few extra. So the symptoms of a Helicobacter pylori infection would be an ache or burning pain in your abdomen. So that's basically the same abdominal pain that's worse when your stomach is empty nausea, loss of appetite, frequent burping, bloating and unintentional weight loss. And such infection needs to be treated with antibiotics. It's usually being done with two different type of antibiotics at the same time and it's really important to do that to get better. You have to keep in mind when gastritis is not being cured it, it can cause an ulcer which is even more painful or in worst case cancer. So if any of you is dealing with these symptoms, I would highly recommend going to a doctor and having a gastroscopy done and they should definitely check for possible bacterial infection. And I think it's also always great to check the stomach acid levels. So the pH uh, of your stomach acid should be three or lower. And whenever people are having too low stomach acid, it can cause similar symptoms and some extra, and it might be easily confused with gastritis, but the treatment is a little bit different. These would be the signs of uh, not enough stomach acids. So feeling like you want to eat even when you're not hungry, feeling too full after regular meals, which would be similar to the gastritis symptoms, indigestion, uh, gas or flatulence, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, soreness or burning in your mouth, stomach upset and cramps, undigested food in stool, nausea, heartburn. And I'm just going to read you the treatment. So hydrochloric acid supplements and enzymes. Your doctor may prescribe supplements such as betaine uh, hydrochloride to restore the pH of your stomach. The stomach enzyme pepsin is another common treatment and uh, the diet needs to be changed. So your doctor may also recommend to go on a diet that's really easy to digest and they also very often suggest supplementing iron, zinc, calcium and vitamin B. In my case, it came out that I did not have any bacterial infections and I did not have any issues with my stomach acid levels. So it was clearly gastritis. And since my stomach lining was irritated at the beginning, I was given a certain medicine to protect the stomach lining and that was Pantoloc. I've been told that I shouldn't take Pantoloc longer than six months and I've been told to take extra magnesium while being on that medicine and I made sure that I would get off the medicine after about like three months. 
The Pantalog definitely helped with the burning pain, but I've been still occasionally having cramps in my stomach, so for that I would be taking either a tonic, that was usually Iberogast, or pastils, either Reni or Easygastril, so basically the stuff you would be taking with heartburn. Now, even though these things were wonderful and helped me to feel better pretty quickly, and I started eating a little bit more, they were like a patch on a wound. They were not healing my stomach. They were just helping with the symptoms, and that's really important to understand. In order to really heal my stomach, I had to go on a special gastritis diet. I had to avoid certain foods, and I had to eat certain foods instead of that in order to get better. So after a thorough discussion with my doctor and with a specialist, I hired a nutritionist and I got two different meal plans and they helped me to heal my stomach long term. So I will link my nutritionist's information down below. Her name is Christina. She's also a wonderful friend and I'm so forever grateful to her because her diet really helped me so, so much. Now, what are the things to avoid whenever dealing with gastritis? Basically, any foods that are difficult to digest, anything that's irritating for the stomach, and that includes also beverages, and anything that's too high in acid. So you should avoid things like fried foods, too spicy foods, highly processed foods, raw foods, with some exceptions. And you should not be drinking coffee, black tea, carbonated drinks, or alcohol. The things that are great for you if you're dealing with gastritis, are foods that are high in fiber, low in acid, and low in fats. So that would be whole grains, certain fruits and vegetables, and legumes. Those who are not vegan could also eat fish and lean meat, which is something I wouldn't do for the ethical reasons, so I just stuck to my legumes. And I found that the best to drink were just herbal teas and plain water, and sometimes also plant milk. And since this was all very general, I thought it would be probably very helpful for you guys if I made a list of the things that I consumed the most. So it's obviously not all I ate or drank, but all the things that I ate or drank most of the time. And I divided the list into certain groups so that it would be easier for you to follow. So I have here the first group and that would be carb sources. So for that I ate mostly brown rice, quinoa, potatoes or sweet potatoes. My protein sources were usually lentils, chickpeas or tempeh, occasionally tofu, but tempeh is less processed, so I mostly ate tempeh, plus I love the taste. Then I have here the fat sources uh, for my diet, so these were olive oil, canola oil, flax seeds, pine seeds and nuts. The vegetables that I ate the most, but cooked or at least steamed, were broccoli, zucchini, carrots, brown mushrooms, pumpkin, Spinach, although in moderate amounts, because I find that when I eat too much spinach, it can make me feel a bit nauseous. I also ate fennel and bell pepper, but again, only cooked. The fruits that I ate the most were bananas, steamed apples, pears, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, mango, apricots, or dry goji berries. And from all these fruits, I would steam only the apples or the pears, and the rest I could eat fresh. The spices and herbs that I've been using were cinnamon, cardamom, turmeric, ginger, black pepper, mild curry madras in small amounts, sometimes even tiny amount of chili, but really, really small because too much would irritate the stomach. Uh, instead of salt, I've been occasionally using vegetable stock without yeast or I've been using simply sea salt with iodine. Uh, what else? Then I have here herbal salt, uh, nettles, um, garlic, parsley, lemon juice and tomato paste. Next we have here the drinks. So I have here a list of herbal teas that I was drinking on a regular basis. There is something special about two of them, so first I'm gonna read you the list. So I drank usually molo tea or molo root tea, mint tea, chamomile tea, rooibos tea, fennel tea or fennel caraway tea or nettle tea. Now the first two teas were special because they are really great uh, for the stomach lining. So the Molo tea is a tea that you would prepare the same way you prepare any other tea with hot water. The Molo root tea needs to be soaked uh, in cold water and that needs to sit for I believe at least half an hour. I would let it sit even overnight and I would drink it in the morning before I drank anything else or ate anything else. And that basically replaced the medicine Pantalog because it 
builds kind of like a slime and protects the stomach lining. It's been recommended to me in the pharmacy and I loved it. It was one of the best things that I could have done for myself. And other than that, I drank just plain water, but because it got boring, uh, just water, I would put in either two lemon slices or a few strawberry slices just for the taste. And last but not least, some other foods that I've been eating or using for cooking on a regular basis. So that will be coconut yogurt. For cooking, I used occasionally plant-based cream cheese or plant-based cream or coconut milk. And for my oats or as a drink, I used plant milk. I make our own plant milk because that's the least processed uh, version. So I will link down below all my plant milk recipes. Again, a few words about the medicine that I have been taking. So at the beginning, as already mentioned, I have been prescribed Pantolog, which was protecting my stomach lining. But later on, I replaced it through the Molorut tea because that way I didn't have to worry about any insufficiencies. Plus the Pantolog shouldn't be taken longer than six months anyway. So I was super happy to get rid of that as soon as I could. And whenever I had cramps, I would take either a tonic, Iberogast in my case, or pastel. So that was in my case either Isigastril or Reni. And I tried not to take them too often, only when really necessary. I should also mention that during the whole time I've been taking my usual supplements. So I take daily a multivitamin, which includes a B12. That's important for me as a vegan. And I also take extra zinc and I've been taking extra magnesium. And curious what my meals looked like throughout the day. So in the morning I would have oats, then I would have lunch that was usually either potatoes with something, some vegetables and legumes or rice or quinoa. Whenever I was hungry in between, I would have usually just a banana or coconut yogurt. And in the evening, I've been eating only soups most of the time. Some of the soups were a little bit thicker. And when I was hungry, I would simply eat two bowls. And sometimes I would put in either legumes or a tempeh cut in little pieces. Just to give you an idea how long it all took. So my first symptoms were at the beginning of the summer. So it was either end of June or beginning of July. And I got my diagnosis in September. And that was the time when I started doing something actively, being on a diet and taking medicine. So from that time, it took in total seven months to be completely healed. I had some ups and downs, but it was gradually getting better and I could gradually sometimes include some chocolate or even small ice cream and stuff like that. And nowadays I can eat normally. I can even occasionally have a coffee and I don't have any issues. So here you have it. It's like I said, all about the three Ds, diagnose, diet and discipline. Medicine alone won't do the trick. It will help with the symptoms, but it won't heal the stomach. For that, you will have to go on a diet and you have to be patient. So you will probably experience some ups and downs, but it will gradually get better. And that's going to be it for today. If you guys have any questions, please write them down below in the comments. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can and to answer to the best of my ability. And you might also want to check my recent what I eat in a day videos. I will link both down below. And that's going to be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you guys very much. God bless you. And see you soon with my next video. Bye.